Okay, now the session has been recorded. Yeah, can you see the presentation? Yes, right? Thanks. Yes. Thank you. Well, uh, you work with a couple of uh, keyboard transformations. I already um, revised some of your uh, of your answers. Um, how to uh, identify how to identify and detect the function of the words the words in use. Uh, this is an example of what you did. You have the root word and you need to use a suffix such as a, a happiness or tidiness or weakness, softness, a, a, a awareness, except nervousness, etc. Now, once we work with the suffixes and language in use with the keyword, I want you to take a look at the following slide. Uh, okay, hold on again. Here you are. What I want you to do there at home is to try to take a look at each of these words. Uh -huh. We can't work in groups, no, we're working individually there at home. And you're going to categorize the words. What is to categorize the word? Well, what I'm trying to get at is that you need to classify the words. Divide fields. Try to make sense of the words for them to fit in a group. OK, so label groups, label groups and place each of the words there. What kinds of groups, what kinds of classifications? It's up to you. It depends on you. OK. Just think of, let's say, three classifications, three groups in which those words could fit in, could be placed in the group. OK, just in a couple of seconds or one minute, try to, to think of a, a, a different groups. Let's say three. You have move, about, flawlessly, crew, meaningless, fit, reconciliation, regardless, lies, man, syringe, root, blood, crop, succinctly, restless, goose, increasingly the precedent analysis but wells rudeness echoes good stimuli cleanliness tomatoes family cat soup geese fruit fish Can anybody help me with one category? With one Burp. classification? Verb. Sorry, can you repeat that? Verb. OK, I think my uh, computer is uh, having problems. Can you say it aloud again? I'm so sorry. Yeah? This is technology constraints. Uh, OK, uh -huh. thank you. Another person. I heard somebody there. Thank you. Uh, you were uh, uh, Lucy. Oh. Cindy. <laughs> ah, Cindy, oh my. Sorry, I can't see you. I'm just in front of the presentation. That's why. Yes, Cindy.
Any other any other category that could be useful for classifying the words? I'm taking my notes. Eh? No. It, it could be nouns. Nouns, okay. Why not? Nouns. Adverbs. Ah? Adverbs. Adverbs? Yes. Adverbs. Okay. One more. Adjectives. Adjectives. Okay. Adjectives. Any other? Conjunctions. 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 Okay. Thank you. That's enough. Yeah. That's enough. So we have a five different classifications so far, right? Now, as far as I understood, sorry for my technology, uh, uh, the digital divide, you know, the, my technology problems. All of them are language related categories, right? Language related classifications. But not only language related classifications. To be more specific, they are let's say, um, form related classifications. Form, because we are referring to parts of the speech, grammatical categories. However, we can find different kinds of groups. It could be uh, listen related words or body parts related words or uh, food related vocabulary. Can you see? Or, you know, uh, it could be, let's see. Um, Human qualities? Uh, yeah, of course, yeah. Animal qualities or descriptions. That's excellent. So what I'm trying to um, highlight, what I want to focus on, is that when classifying words and when dealing with words, with lexis or grammar, we need to think of these three different dimensions. The ones I was referring to at the beginning of the presentation, remember? Form, structure, construction, patterns, meaning, and context. Why and when. Our first presentation for, for the course is going to be focused on these words. Move about closely, fish, family, echoes, etc. And of course, it's going to depend on you, the way you're going to classify them, the way you're going to categorize them. Uh, you could go for parts of the speech, and of course, that's going to be correct. It's going to be a personal decision, it's going to be a personal description of how the words should be classified. That's going to be your first presentation, okay? You did a very good job now. Uh, you did very well. You identified several categories and they were related to language, to form. And I guess they are related to form because we are working with the structure, okay? But this is a very good time for you to be creative and to take a look at language in a in a, a in a different manner. So, um, how are you going to classify the words? Okay, maybe you would like to um, a, a screenshot. You know, to take a photo of the screen, and, and, and for you to remember all the words. We have one, two, three, four, five. Six, 
7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, 36, 37, 38, 39, 40, 41, 42, 43, 44, 45, 46, 47, 48, 49, 50, 51, 52, 53, 54, 55, 56, 57, 58, 59, 60, 61, 62, 63, 64, 65, 66, 67, 68, 69, 70, 71, 72, 73, 74, 75, 76, 77, 78, 79, 80, 81, 82, 83, 84, 85, 86, 87, 88, 89, 90, 91, 92, 93, 94, 95, 96, 97, 98, 99, 2000, 2001, 2002, 2003, 2004, 2005, 2006, 2007, 2008, 2009, 2010, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, 36, 37, 38, 39, 40, 41, 42, 43, 44, 45, 46, 47, 48, 49, 50, 51, 52, 53, 54, 55, 56, 57, 58, 59, 60, 61, 62, 63, 64, 65, 66, 67, 68, 69, 70, 71, 72, 73, 74, 75, 76, 77, 78, 79, 80, 81, 82, 83, 84, 85, 86, 87, 88, 89, 90, 91, 92, 93, 94, 95, 96, 97, 98, 99, 2000, 2001, 2002, 2003, 2004, 2005, 2006, 2007, 2008, 2009, 2010, 2011, 2012, 2013, 2014, 2015, 2016, 2017, 2018, 2019, 2020, 2021, 2022, 2023, 2024, 2025, 2026, 2027, 2028, 2029, 2020, 2021, 2022, 2023, 2024, 2025, 2026, 2027, 2028, 2029, 2020, 2021, 2022, 2023, 2024, 2025, 2026, 2027, 2028, 2029, 2020, 2021, 2022, 2023, 2024, 2025, 2026, 2027, 2028, 2029, 2020, 2021, 2022, 2023, 2024, 2025, 2026, 2027, 2028, 2029, 2020, 2021, 2022, 2023, 2024, 2025, 2026, 2027, 2028, 2029, 2020, 2021, 2022, 2023, 2024, 2025, 2026, 2027, 2028, 2029, 2020, 2021, 2022, 2023, 2024, 2025, 2026, 2027, 2028, 2029, 2020, 2021, 2022, 2023, 2024, 2025, 2026, 2027, 2028, 2029, 2020, 2021, 2022, 2023, 2024, 2025, 2026, 2027, 2028, 2029, 2020, 2021, 2022, 2023, 2024, 2025, 2026, 2027, 2028, 2029, 2020, 2021, 2022, 2023, 2024, 2025, 2026, 2027, 2028, 2029, you know, might be a representation of how you understand the words. And that's what I want to check. That's what you need to share with others. And by identifying how others uh, actually look at words, it's going to be enriching and interesting for everyone. We're going to share our, per our own perceptions of classifications, our own perceptions of words, and that's going to be nurturing for everybody. I think so. OK. Um, we're going to follow specific guidelines for um, our presentations. OK. The presentation was thought to be carried out in pairs or trios, but that's going to be hard. Honestly, it's going to be difficult because we're working online and what well, communication is a little bit harder and, you know, an interaction between mates, well, it makes it uh, a little bit complex. It's possible, of course, it's doable. So if you want to work with a classmate, well, that would be great. You know, you can meet up online any, any time uh, uh, during the week. But if you can't get in touch with your classmates, well, work individually, OK? Could be any individual work, an individual presentation. Well, uh, the instructions of the presentation can be found in, uh, no, can be found on Eminus platform, OK? This was the previous instruction you know, because uh, this was uh, designed at the beginning for face to face classes. But now we're working online and the instructions vary a little bit. And instructions. Wait a sec. I'm going to show you the instructions so that it can be clear and crystal for you. There you have. It. Now we are on Eminus platform. Are we not? Yeah. Can you see Eminus platform? Can you? Yes. Good. Ah, thank you for your answer. Thank you. Take a look at this. This is the content, right? Content, 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 content. Yeah, first sec session, second session, third session, fourth, fifth. And I think you're gonna find 
this presentation here. Motivating yourself and setting goals. This is not going to be part of your evil. Ah, here you are. OK, presentation one categorization. This is the instruction. Categorize the words seen in class. That is the ones we are checking uh, today. The ones we just check in this slide. Record it. And create categories. Subcategories and sub subcategories. OK. You can use any kind of structure or a scheme. You could use PowerPoint presentation, Prezi, an infographic, Canva, or you could use a Padlet or a Mind Meister, Mind Domo, whatever you want. Okay, it's up to you. Write your categories, subcategories. And sub subcategories or sub 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 subcategories, it's up to you. By representing your learning styles, this is um, we haven't revised learning styles in depth, but I guess, uh, but I guess you uh, have well certain knowledge about learning styles. Uh, people who are visual, people who are uh, auditory, people who are kinesthetic or people who are uh, reading and writing uh, related ones or a uh, or the different learning styles we are already related to this is what i was trying to explain that the way you edify and build um, knowledge of words knowledge of constructions and relationships among words might be a representation of your style you know people who are really into reading and writing might classify words by using parts of the speech or grammatical categories and people who are into arts you know music or photography or a um, uh, you know um different kinds of, of art might classify the words by a um, professions or uh, I don't know it depends on your personality on your perception <clears throat> on your context as well well these are the words okay these are the words now how are you going to present this? Well, you're going to design a presentation. Yeah, for explaining how you classify the words. And you're going to record yourself while presenting. OK. Once you record yourself, you're going to upload your presentation to YouTube platform. YouTube more friendly for uploading videos and that's why I suggest uploading your video there so that everybody can see the video and finally you're going to share the link you know the YouTube link of your presentation here in the evaluation section you go to evaluation let's go to evaluation evaluation presentation one categorization Mm -hmm. huh. And to the forum, there is one forum called categorization. You need to follow the instructions there in the forum. So let's suppose you're here and this is the place you need to deliver your link. OK, you deliver your link here. By the way, it's going to be from um, November the 3rd. That is today until November 9th at 10 in the morning. OK. Once you have delivered your link, you go to the forum, go to the forum. 
and there is one uh, here you have one form called categorization click here and you will find the instructions upload your categorization presentation video to youtube platform and then share the link in this forum you're going to share the link finally you will have to provide your feedback to at least two classmates videos so you need to watch two different videos okay you're going to watch videos and you're going to write comments on what you think about their classifications that's going to be your participation here remember that this is going to be 10 percent of your evaluation okay both you need to consider let's go back let's go to evaluations you need to consider this covering rubric and your participation in the forum is part of the evaluation okay go again here and you will find the evaluation rubric and the criteria first presentation evaluation rubric this is what is expected from your presentation okay you can download it and you will find the rubric okay remember that your participation in the forum is very important for interaction to take place this is a very good opportunity to interact to exchange ideas among classmates okay i want interaction to take place and well there is room for doing so so this is the opportunity to check how our classmates classify words okay 10 points so you're gonna be great okay here you are um do you have any questions about the presentation let me know listening to you Sorry, no questions, right? No, no, I guess there are no questions. Well, it's there. You have plenty of time. It's in November uh, the 9th. E e remember, before 10 o'clock in the morning. Um, and well, let's continue then. Okay, here we are. Take a look at the pictures. Ah, oh, lovely animals. Yeah, dog, bull, a oh, cat, a dog. Okay, yeah. Take a look at them. Beautiful animals. I love animals, by the way. Eh? I'm a vegetarian. Um, um, but anyways, I, I love animals, you know. Uh, I'm kind of a dogs. I really love dogs. You know, a, uh, I love lions as well. You know, they are not pets, of course. That's why I rather have my dog. Uh, but I really love animals. Well, try to um, identify each animal. Okay, dog, bull, cat, dog, cow horse, a chicken, a, a sheep, a, 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 the cock, a, you have this a chick, fish, and a lion, right? Um, how many categories do you think you can find for the animals? projected how many categories could emerge 
for classifying the animals. Try to think individually. Try to think of five different categories. OK, five different categories for classifying these animals. Five, just in two minutes or one minute. Five different categories for classifying these different kinds of animals. They share commonalities, of course, but they share more differences. That's why we need to categorize them. We need to create a system for classifying these animals. OK. Hiram, can you share one category you could think of? Hiram, are you there? Felinos. OK, good, yeah, felines or cats, big cats, right? Big cats. Yeah, you can call them uh, felines or big cats. Yeah, they are wonderful, you know, really beautiful, impressive and scary. I'm afraid of cats, by the way, you know, sorry to be sharing this, but you know, I, well, I need to share information with you, right? But yeah, I'm afraid of cats. I don't know why. I need to go to therapy, I guess. They are beautiful, of course, you know, and I've been studying about cars, you know, uh, cats were uh, very important for um, Egyptian uh, um, civilization, right? Uh, they were kind of cats, or, you know, for that reason. Um, any other classification? Uh, let's say, uh, uh, sorry? Mammals. Mammals. Yeah, excellent. Mammals. So we have two. Mammals. Vibe. Yeah, again, sorry. Vibe. Bite. No, um, viviparo. Ah, okay. I'm sorry. I'm I'm more silly. Yeah, that's right. Okay, very well. Two leg animals. Okay. Excellent. Yeah. Of course, or fish have no uh, 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 legs, right? No, they do not. Yeah, another one. Farm animals. Farm. Very well. Farm animals. Yeah, farm. Excellent. Mammals, farm, big hats, two leg animals. Those with and you feathers? Know, uh, yeah, sorry. Those with feathers? Ah, yeah, correct. Animals with feathers. Okay, feather. Okay, perfect. Excellent. You know, a, a, a chicken, for example, right? Yeah, excellent. So we have five so far. Now we could find more. And it's very interesting how you can write, for example, four animals. But, you know, check, we're taking advantage of, uh, of, of this to concentrate on form, use, and context. Two leg or four leg could be a compound noun. It's compound, it's called compound. You know why? Because it's connected with hyphen. Hmm? For example, close hyphen related. Or uh, e hyphen male. That's a compound noun. It's a noun made up of two different words, electronic mail, right? Or ebook, electronic book. Well, in this case, we can use two leg animal 
four electron remodes. And in, well, while looking at words, we start wondering, you know, the reasons why uh, they change. And no wonder they do, because language is alive, right? Language is constantly changing. But the moment we identify our own patterns, our own constructions, we're likely to remember the words. Not only regarding meaning, but, you know, use. Real use, meaningful use. And that's likely to become lifelong learning, you know. Real learning for real context, for real situations. Of course, we could add sea animals here, uh, uh, you know, um, e e e animals e which eat e meat or animals which eat e vegetables or um, animals with pigs uh, or uh, white animals or um, or yellow animals or uh, pets or wild animals or um, you know dangerous animals or a um, well for about uh, 20 categories right sports animals i don't know right so we have plenty of options and the more we have options you know the more we know what those animals can do what those animals represent if we write, for example, eatable animals, that is animals that are eaten. Well, we could include many of them, you know, uh, dogs are eaten in South Korea, <laughs> right? Um, we eat cows here, but we couldn't add into this category uh, in India, for example, you know, India is a country in a country in Asia. We couldn't add cows because cows are not eaten there. So um, our perceptions of words may vary. You know, once we are learning languages, because we need to learn, we need to take into consideration. A, a, um, these three different domains and three different dimensions of language, right? But in the end, we can have many, you know, many classifications, many categories, and a, a bunch of um, of a, a categories, right? Take a look at the words we need to present for the following week. Take a look at them, okay? We're about to finish. Um, I have a couple of questions for you that I want you to solve. Those are the questions. Check it out. You can use the dictionary, an online dictionary. Can anybody tell me what the plural of the year is? What is the plural form of the animal deer. You know deer? Now Christmas is coming. It's an animal. That's, that's remains the same, the same way. Yeah, it's it's the same. same. Yeah. It's the same. It stays the same. Deer. One deer, two deer. Right? Correct? Yes. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. It stays the same. Yeah, it stays the same. Sorry. You're used to pluralized. Um, sorry, you're used to pluralizing words uh, uh, by adding s, because this is what uh, we usually do in our mother tongue, which is Spanish for our case, and because this is very frequently seen in the construction of words in English, in Spanish. Um, different languages, you know, uh, identify the gender or the plural or the singular. 
or um, characteristics of a word by changing the word, by adding particles, or, you know, it just stays the same. And the context is the one that gives you the answer, whether they're referring to singular or plural. And it, well, we need a lot of reflection, practice, immersion, you know, and to know the culture in order to understand the form. Because it's not that we are going to get the meaning only by memorizing. You can use memory related strategies, of course, and to memorize and to say this is a fact. Dear in plural is always going to be dear. But to what extent memorizing that is going to be meaningful and productive for communication purposes. Now that you're studying English as a major, of course you need to memorize it. That's going to be compulsory. You know, that's going to be a must. You need to memorize it. Dear, dear, fish, fish. Yeah, so you need to do it. But you need to reflect on the reasons why, okay? What does that mean? You know, what are the, the roles of the animal? What is, what, is, what is it that, you know, um, makes it stay the same? You know, uh, um, what is the, the, the representation of the animal? Or uh, uh, when can we find, a, where can we find a deer? Or, or you know, what they eat, etc. I don't know. We need to go beyond. Yeah? We need to go beyond memo memory related skills. We need to reflect. And that's what we do with grammar. Basically, not only with Lexis, but that's what we do with grammar. We wonder the reasons why things change. But before going into that process. We learn it. Or we acquire it. That is we follow two different processes which are going to be determined by our personality, by our needs, by the way we deal with language. Um, we're going to be uh, studying this topic with different activities, with different, uh, with different exercises and also with uh, different units, okay? So, uh, well, this is going to be a, a process of reflection, but also um, of construction of language at the same time. For example, the following question, what is the singular form of the noun stimuli? Can anybody help me? What is the singular form of the noun stimuli? Does anybody know? A stimulus? Stimulus. Yeah, stimulus. that's my correct. Very good. Okay. S T I M U L U S. Stimulus. Okay. The word changes, right? The spelling changes. The language spell changes. You know, it's the language spell is referring to the magic of language. And spelling refers to the way you write it, letter by letter. Interesting, interesting, yeah? Now, is flawlessly the correct spelling of the adverb? No, it is not. It is not. Which one is the correct spelling of flawlessly? Can anybody help me? Can you spell it? Correctly, of course. Any any of you guys who can help me? 
Well, I will do it, don't worry. It's here. This is the one flawlessly. F-L-A-W-L-E-S-S-L-Y, flawlessly. This is the correct spelling. This is not correct, we're missing one S, right? This is correct. How can we learn the way words are spelled? How can we learn the language spell? Not the language spelling, isolated, but the language spell, well, by means of reflection, by using the word, you know? Of course, by writing the word, the exercise of moving your hand helps a lot, you know, it does. Has it ever happened to you that you are trying to remember a word and you are trying to write it, but you need to move your hand in order to remember how to write it? Has it ever happened to you? Because it happens to me a lot, you know? I'm thinking of a word, I say, okay, succinctly, succinctly, no, no, I need to write it here. And I don't write it, I just pretend to be writing the word, you know, okay, it's S, U, C, S. It happens, right? I don't think it only happens to me, but it happens. It's the inner dialogue. And the movement of your hand, you know, has impact on that. Now, it's very interesting to explore how things are changing at the moment. And we have this a uh, word processor, right? We have a Word or Excel, PowerPoint, etc. Or we have the mobile phone. Yeah, let's do it that way. We have the mobile phone we're writing and we have the language corrector, right? So it's important to reflect on the spelling. It's important to reflect on that. But how can you learn it? You know, it depends on your abilities. It depends on your personality. It depends on your skills. It depends on how you deal with language. Because for me, moving, you know, moving, uh, moving my hand, pretending to write is fundamental. It's a turning point for me. Some people relate the word with experiences or with the smells, you know. I remember a couple of words from my, my, my grandmother, you know. My grandmother-in-law, grandmother-in-law, eh, 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 and I learned a couple of English words because of her. And I remember the moment, you know, I remember the moment in which uh, we used the words. Well, she did and I just repeated the words. But the moment I need to remember the meaning of the word, it's because I was there. And I, and, and I can even remember the smell, you know? So senses and proxemics are very important for understanding meaning, for the spelling, for the use of the word. It's just a beautiful experience to explore how we deal with uh, with language, how we deal with words, how we learn them, how we acquire functions. But anyways, you know. the next one, what does rudeness mean? Rudeness, what is the meaning of rudeness? Well, can anybody help me? Descortes. Ah, thank you very much. Yeah, that's the translation. Yeah, what that's what it means in Spanish, right? But if you tried to describe what it means, what would you say? How would you describe the word rudeness? Lack of manners. Being a, uh -huh. Lack of manners, lack of courtesy, right? Being impolite, that's right, being impolite, not being polite. You have many ways to explain the word without, you know, uh, going to the uh, Spanish root, of course, the translation. And the more options 
you got in order to describe the word, the more you're going to be working on your possibilities regarding language. It's also important to translate the word sometimes for some people, you know, to feel certain. For certainty to take place for self-confidence security. It helps. And it helps in this context, which is a foreign language one. Where input, real input outside the classroom is difficult to be found. Although, you know, we are um, full of English words around, you know, McDonald's, Burger King, uh, television, uh, um, uh, Twitter and Facebook. And, you know, everything is uh, in English in your mobile phone. Um, so we are in contact with the language. Yeah, we are. But we do not speak the language as a main vehicle of communication. Outside the room, the moment you leave this course, the, the moment you leave this session, you know, the moment we stop the presentation, you stop thinking in English. And you start thinking in Spanish. So we are in a foreign language context where language is used as the main vehicle of communication in the course at a school. Right, not outside school. And that's why we need to create scenarios or own contexts for using the language as much as possible, as many times as possible. And one good rule of thumb, one strategy, if you want to call it that way, is to continuously think of the language, you know, while you're carrying out your everyday tasks. If you go to the mall, if you go to the supermarket, you can start counting in English, you know. Uh, if you're taking a shower, you can start singing English. Or if you're talking to a friend, you might be wondering how you would express those feelings in English. And well, that helps a lot, you know, to be in contact with the target language, which is something we we, we need to do because of, of our context and the nature uh, of our situations. Now, how do you pronounce the word? How do you pronounce the word? Write the pronunciation. That's going to be homework. Huh? That's going to be homework. Can anybody help me with the pronunciation of the word? Strange. Thank you. Very well. Excellent. Now write the pronunciation and you must remember how to look for the pronunciation, right? Which is sometimes in brackets after the meaning of the word. What is the correct stress of the word? Can anybody help me with the correct stress of the word? Increasingly. That's correct. Brilliant. Increasingly. Increase. OK. How can you identify the stress of a word? Because it's represented, it's a, a shown and displayed in the pronunciation section in the dictionary, whether online or, you know, the dictionary you got at home. What type of word is regardless? Write an example or write the necessary examples. What part of the speech is regardless? <clears throat> is it an adverb? an adverb? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay. An adverb. Uh -huh. Only an adverb? A conjunction, I feel. Sorry? A uh, conjunction. 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 An adverb. Okay, very well. Rafa, right? Rafa? Yes. Ah, Rafa. Wow, okay. 
Well, make sure you investigate whether regardless it can be an adverb and a conjunction and write one sentence example for each or regardless working as an adverb and regardless working as a conjunction. That's going to be homework for a, a, a dynamics in class section. OK, you're going to write the answers of each of the questions here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Homework dynamics in class for this week. Also. Journal. Journal entry for this week, the sixth week. Remember to keep the date, OK? Keep the date at the top. Vocabulary chart. Six week. OK, and. Course your presentation on classification. OK, four pieces of homework so far, but they're going to be really straightforward. You know, not a problem for you. Now take a look at this. If you would have to create a category for the following words, which one would it be? Australia, Africa, South America, Asia, North America, Europe. One, co one category for those words. Continents. Continents, yeah. Basically continents, right? Yeah. That could be a, a different category, of course. Some people might think of territories or uh, lands, you know. But certainly, you know, if we follow our general culture, general common sense, most people would say continents. And it makes sense here, and it makes sense in Europe, and it makes sense in Africa. So most people are going to find it very likely to classify it into uh, continents, right? Because uh, we all share these divisions regarding territories. So it's um, good to identify the commonalities we share with different cultures, but it is also and even more interesting to identify the differences we got. Um, we have different words here. We have different words such as artist, China, doctor, aid, engineer, Mexico City, explorer, filmmaker, five, Great Britain, India, Italy, nine, Omani, one woman, six English teacher, then the United States, three German in Cape Town. This was supposed to be an activity in the classroom. Well, we don't have much time um, and I don't think that's going to be a, a, a relevant, you know, for for our discussion. We have already discussed, in fact, the purposes of working with suffixes, the purposes of classifying words, and the dimensions of uh, both lexis and syntax to merge both uh, uh, studies. And it, it was just to close up, you know, to finish up the, the uh, the idea of classification, the idea of classifying and how to build personality and how to include the culture related information when learning languages. So we, instead of doing the activity, let's finish up by a, a quotation the way I construct meaning 
might be a representation of who I am, but also might be a representation of how I relate to others. Uh, um, this is about building awareness of your identity as students, as people, and uh, building professional identity as well. Understanding your area of study, understanding uh, language, and uh, more than understanding, exploring language. Um, this is a, a representation of the previous activity, where continents, countries, capital cities, languages, jobs, numbers, the art, science, and well, it's just an example, you know, it's my example. Yeah, but it could be different because we are all different. And as we are distinct, our learning strategies are going to be different too. You know, uh, our learning styles differ one from another. And the way I learn words, it's going to be very different from the way you do it. Uh, but a uh, reflection and sharing information in a group is always beneficial for everybody for learning to take place, you know. Well, uh, remember your homework with categorization. Um, one, uh, well, this is number five here. Yeah, this is going to be important. Investigate what irregular plural nouns are. Well, you know, we, because we, we, we check an example. Um, write in your dynamics in class um, 15 examples of irregular plural nouns and try to investigate the patterns, okay? Not rules, but the patterns for pluralizing regular plural nouns in English, okay? Then you will have time to design 10 flashcards with irregular plural nouns. Try to include singular and plural, okay? Uh, in a single flashcard. But if it's not possible, well, just include the singular form or the plural form. It depends on, on the format you are following. Now, for this piece of a uh, for this piece of uh, homework, I mean, in the investigation about plural nouns, identifying the pattern for pluralizing the words, write um, examples for each. You will have until um, next Tuesday. Okay, so you you have plenty of time because next class we're going to check plural nouns. OK, that's for next Tuesday. So you could do it on Tuesday and I will check it on on Tuesday evening or Wednesday morning. OK. So next session we will go over plural nouns. And remember, the most important thing is your presentation because your presentation is 10 percent of your evaluation. OK. Well, it's been a pleasure. Yeah, and I have another class. But if you have any questions, you can send me an email, you can text me, you can call me, or, uh, um, or if it is a short question, I can answer it right now. So I'm listening to you. No questions? Well, great. Thank you. I think it's clear. Yeah, it is. No question. Yeah, Rafa. Do we have to design the 10 flashcards? Yeah. All right. Yeah, please. Teacher. For Tuesday, for Tuesday, Rafa, OK? Teacher? Student? Um, do in the video well, the the one that we have to record the presentation do we have to like it's only the audio or also a video of us talking 
have, have you ever seen the videos I record here um, when I, I'm explaining the presentations? Um, no. No. Well, um, well, let me let me show you this very fast, just uh, to give you an example. Okay. Check it out. You don't need to be there in the video. You know what needs to be there? It's your presentation. Check. Uh, let's go here. Content. By the way, every single session is being recorded, and I place it here. Huh? Let's see. Introduction. The last one. Suffixes. Uh, let's check this one. Suffixes. It's loading. Oh, my bloody internet is so slow. It's loading. Oh my dog. This is very slow. Uh oh. Ah, there it goes. What happens? Ah, check. Yes. Can you listen? Um, the video YouTube uh, now. So you can listen to the video, right? No. No. But anyways, it's not important. No. Take a look at it. Is my presentation on suffixes the previous week, last time? Remember? Yes. Ah, oh, well, I'm explaining the task. We're talking about suffixes, but I'm not there. It's my presentation. Can you see? Yes. Okay, well, that's what you need to do. Uh. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Ah, yes. perfect. Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay. That's your presentation there. Mm -hmm. Whether you're using slides or an infographic or a PDF, you need to explain the presentation. You need to present the information. It's not that you need to record yourself, but to record your presentation. Well, thank you very much, guys. I really enjoyed the session. Uh, it was nice to hear from you. It was nice to share um, at least this uh, one hour and a half. Uh, we'll be looking forward to um, watching your videos, watching your presentations, checking up your homework, and remember the next session is going to be focused on plural nouns to continue with a um, reflection and learning strategies. Thank you for your time and have a lovely day. Have a lovely week, by the way. Good luck with your learning experiences. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Have, have a great one. Thank you. Bye.